There in the corner of my bedroom stood a black figure. Our camera did happen to capture a shorter shadow figure that was there. Welcome to Friday Night Ghost Frights. I'm author and ghost story Mike Ricksecker. Explore with us. Shadow people are one of the most mysterious supernatural entities that we know about. Of course, there are very many theories that abound concerning shadow people, but I have happened to have had a number of experiences with shadow people. First and foremost is one of the very first paranormal experiences I've ever had. Could actually be the very first. You never know about when I was a little bit younger. When I was about eight or nine years old, I woke up in the middle of the night and there in the corner of my bedroom stood a black figure. Of course, I wasn't thinking quote unquote shadow person at the time, had no idea what that term meant. I thought there was somebody in my room. Looked like an adult, but I couldn't tell any features. It was just very dark, but in the shape of a person. Now, I tried to scream, of course, being the age that I was, but I couldn't. My mouth opened, but nothing came out. Well, then this shadowy person approached me, still couldn't make out any of the features. And then it did one of the most unusual things that I can ever remember. It took my arms and crossed them over my body like this. And then it ran off down the hall and I saw it go into the linen closet of all crazy places it could possibly go. That's where it went, into the linen closet. Well, I finally found my voice, sprang up out of my bed, ran to my parents' bedroom and told them about what happened. Of course, they just chalked it up to having a bad dream, but I was completely awake for this incident. Second experience that I've had with a shadow person, we had actually moved from that house. That house was in Massachusetts. We were moving to Ohio when I was 13 years old. And during our move, as we're unpacking at the new house, I kept seeing out of the corner of my eye, somebody peering into the bedroom. Every time I'd look, the figure would disappear. And it was just like a quick wisp, you know, like, a shadow of a person peering into the door. And this happened a number of times as I was unpacking, setting up, arranging things in my new bedroom, putting things up on the wall. And so eventually I asked my mother about it and said, hey mom, you know, I keep seeing this out of the corner of my eye whenever I'm, you know, in my room setting things up. Have you been seeing the same thing you know, as you've been setting up? And she did in fact say, yeah, she had also been seeing the same thing. So. I started calling it Tom <laughs> for like peeping Tom because it kept peeping in my bedroom at me at what I was doing. Well, several months went by and Tom basically vanished. Never saw him again. So what I ended up chalking that up to was it was a person that was curious about who we were, you know, what we were like moving into this house, figured we were okay and went about its business. Again, I wasn't really thinking quote unquote shadow figure at the time. I was thinking something paranormal, something that was supernatural, a ghost perhaps, but I didn't make the connection with shadow figure. Fast forward a number of years when I'm in my 30s and now I've made the connection. <laughs> I know that I had seen shadow people. I've learned a lot more about the paranormal since then. And we were conducting an investigation at a restaurant called Johnny V's in Muskogee, Oklahoma. It's since closed up. Well, we were actually pretty much finished with the investigation. Some people were down in the restaurant area, kind of just chilling out. Some people were upstairs. I was doing one final sweep, just getting some photographs. And I had walked into the kitchen through the main door in the front. And all of a sudden, very quickly, there was this black shadowy wisp that just darted across the room. And you heard it slam into the metal swinging door that was on the side. Except you didn't see the metal door swing. It was just, you heard a bam, but no door movement whatsoever. You guys hear that? You, got, you guys hear that bang? Yeah. Yeah, it was back here in the kitchen. Of course, the people that were in the other room heard it as well. I was like, hey, did you guys hear that? Yeah, we heard that. Hey, that was in here. And you know, we talked about it for a little while. I was even started asking if they threw something at the door and what have you. But no, they heard the sound, no door movement. But I had seen a black shadowy wisp 
dart across. In fact, it almost seemed like I scared it, which is a little unusual. Now, around that same time frame, we were also filming for the television show The Haunted, which aired on Animal Planet. It's now running in syndication in a number of places. But at this house in Edmond, Oklahoma, the girl, Talison, had reported seeing the shadow person with the red eyes many times in her, in her closet. Our occult specialist in Carl Johnson deduced that this had been a wraith, but a lot of the physical qualities that she described were the shadow person with the red eyes. I never saw that, and neither did anybody else in the group. But what I did see was one of what we call a shadow person. And basically what was going on at this time was the cat was getting all stirred up and riled up, running around the house, around the living room, the kitchen, the dining room area, and then started heading toward the bedroom. So I started following it. Well, it suddenly stopped right at the door to Talison's bedroom. So I looked in, and what I saw was a huge black mass. It was just hovering there in the middle of her bedroom. Animals have a higher perception of the paranormal than we do as humans. Jasmine bolted away from the doorway. There's a cat here in the room. No, the cat didn't make it to the room. All of a sudden, I saw this huge black mass. It was a massive black shadow. I was a bit startled just because of the size of it. No eyes, no feature, no nothing. Just this huge black mass. It just blotted out all the light in the room. It just hovered there in the middle. So the cat took off around the wall, you know, under the uh, under the piano, it was her chair, and there was the piano. It took off that way, and I just watched this thing slowly dissipate away. I tried to take a photograph, got nothing, but I did with my own eyes watch this black mass just dissolve into nothing. Now, with Shauna and I, with Society of the Haunted, we have seen a number of shadows as well, mostly on the Goldenrod Showboat. Of course, we can no longer see those there, but. We would usually see this shadow person upstairs, second floor, in this hallway, short hallway, between the dining area and then out to the balcony. There was also a passageway back there that went around to the galley. But in this, it was probably a server station, is kind of what the setup was. And every single time I walked through there, I would get the cobwebby feel or the electrostatic feel on my arms. There was something going on there. No electricity w out there whatsoever. It abandoned boat out in the middle of nowhere. No electricity, just sitting there, dry docked on land. Nothing there. We investigated that section of the boat countless times. It never was any electricity. But we did see from time to time a shadow person lingering about in there or walking through the door. There was one specific time that Shauna saw a shadow person walk through that door with two of what she calls twinkles following it into that room, into that passageway. But I saw like a full, like a full shadow, like at least my size. Um, into not, there? Not on the wall. Um, but into the doorway. Where, I went in the doorway and then as soon as I called for Jake and then I told him what I saw and then right after he answered me then two of the little twinkles um, went in there. Now the twinkles on that boat were something a little bit different that we had seen a number of times. There was even a ferry incident on there that we've talked about before in a previous Friday Night Ghost Frights. But in that passageway was definitely an area where we saw a shadow figure many, many times. And then there is the old Campsville grade school, which is another place we can't get into anymore because it's now been taken over by the Archaeological Society and they have use of it. But before they did, we investigated there a few times. And one of the final times that we did, we did happen to capture a short shadow person over by the doors to the boys' locker room, which also led down to the basement. Now, there were many times we did pick up on paranormal activity happening over there by those sets of doors, whether they were voices that we heard upon the air, whether they were footsteps that we heard, whether there was something that we were kind of seeing with our eyes. 
and there always seemed to be a little bit of something. We did capture some EVPs in that gym. On this particular night, we were sitting in the bleachers, and we did hear things going on within the gym. And our camera did happen to capture a shorter shadow figure that was there. So like a step. Oh, that's how it works, huh? Can you play that whistle for us again? Motorcycle outside. So now what about old hag syndrome and sleep paralysis? Well, I'm not going to get too deep into it here because old hag syndrome, there's so many legends over the thousands of years that many many cultures almost every single culture around the world have reported and it's very interesting to actually research those and look into it and notice how all of these different cultures that for thousands of years had no contact with each other reported the same type of activity going on but i will say this about sleep paralysis since that is commonly brought up when people talk about waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a shadow person in their room a lot of people do experience a some form of sleep paralysis or can't move or something like that going on with me personally in my shadow person experience when i woke up in the middle of the night again arms crossed i was able to turn my head down the hall i wasn't paralyzed i have experienced real sleep paralysis and it was more i was sitting like this and basically fell asleep at that moment when I didn't want to be falling asleep. So my brain was still conscious, trying to wake me up, and I just couldn't move. It was actually very scary because I was awake knowing I was paralyzed. And, you know, that, there's a fright feel to that. Basically what I ended up figuring out was to start at my toes and kind of slowly start to wiggle the toes, work my way up to my body until I finally came awake. This has happened to me twice and was nothing like seeing a shadow person. Um, I didn't see any shadow people at that time. And the other thing I'll throw out there is, if you're gonna say that the shadow people incidents are sleep paralysis, then why is it? And, and the theory is that our minds are still hallucinating when we wake up. Our body is still in a sleep state, but our minds are starting to come awake and it's hallucinating things from within our dreams and we're, thinking we're seeing these around our room. But my question is, why is it always a person that we see? Person in the corner, person, you know, standing in the doorway, at the foot of the bed, it's always a person. Sometimes they're wearing a hat. I haven't had a hat man experience, by the way. <laughs> but why is it a tree that sprouted in my room? Why isn't there a car driving by? Why isn't there a plane flying overhead? These are things that may happen within my dream, but it's never that. It's always a person. So therefore, I don't believe it's sleep paralysis and hallucinating. So those are my experiences with shadow people. I've had some other smaller ones, but those are the main big ones. So if you've had experiences with shadow people, a shadow man, the hat man, whomever, please go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. I am currently, since I'm a author currently writing a book on shadow people and i'm collecting experiences to talk about see what people have in common if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and do so also click the little bell notification you'll be notified of all of our upcoming videos that we have i'm mike ricksecker till next friday night i wasn't really 100 percent sure if it was a child or not but you know just the behavior